today, the word of God is Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 through 41, but we're going to read only 40 and 41, and I'll read it for us. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, so you men cannot keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. Verse one today. It's a small crowd because uh, half of our congregation is downstairs for our Korean service. Um, but for our English speakers, everyone, this is a very important time schedule for us to once again hold on to the message God is giving to us as remnants in America. We need to raise the partisan of prayer for the next, from 2030 to 2080, because during that time, we'll be fully running our ministries, and our next generation will be rising up, going to the schools, the colleges, the missions fields. So what do you need to be? You need to be the church evangelist. commander who can save all things and as this church evangelist commander we're what we're raising the prayer partisan now everyone this word partisan it, you can you can substitute whatever you want you can put partisan you can put tower you can put whatever you need to put there because not, we're not physically literally raising up a, a turret we're not that's not what's happening but what we're doing is we're raising up that spiritual the m- far exceedingly more important spiritual partisan of prayer, that turret, that watchtower of prayer. As a church evangelist commander, as a church evangelist leader. So what's the first thing that you think we must do is we need to make a resolution. Before we even get into the, the, the introduction, we first make to make a, we need to make a resolution of what? A resolution of prayer. I know even from yesterday, and we've been doing this for some time, but there is a need for us to have concentrated prayer. And that's why we had this whole thing set up 40 days, 10 days, 3 days, 2 day. We need to make this resolution of prayer today, right now. And Even today, we have such an important time schedule of concentration on our Sabbath. Why? Because what's the Sabbath? What does the Sabbath even mean? That it means rest. But where am I finding my true rest? Where do I experience true rest in my spirit, in my mind, in my body? in the midst of all the problems and conflicts and difficulties, in the midst of all my work and studies, where am I finding true rest? Everyone, this resolution of prayer is not a small thing. Because all of this, it leads to what? That 24 hour of happiness, of making what? Everything that I see, everything that I hear, everything into my prayer. That 24-hour prayer. That becomes what? The 25th hour of God, which is what? The kingdom of God taking place in my life. We call that the 25th. There is no 25th hour, but that's why it's transcending time and space. It's God's time. The kingdom of God working upon my life when I enjoy my 24 hours of prayer, everything becoming my prayer. That's why Pastor Yu doesn't, he doesn't pray before he eats, right? Because he's always in the midst of prayer. What, what does it mean if you're praying when you eat? It's you, don't, you pray so little in your life. You're like, at least I'm praying when I eat. Like, at least my meals I'm praying. 
everyone, if we're really enjoying this resolution of prayer today, 24 hours, I don't really need to pray when I eat. I'll be honest with you, I don't really pray when I eat either, because I'm, I'm not saying I'm 24-hour prayer like pastor, but I do pray to the point where I'm not, when I eat, I'm always just thankful for God giving me this food. Uh, uh, Jenny, there's a, a Korean worship down here. If you want to go there, you can stay here, it's up to you. <laughs> this is our resolution of prayer. We have to be that what? That one person. In Korean, we say what? 그한 사람. That one person. Where? That one person of prayer who makes resolution of prayer, where? In my home. In my family. My family line. In my workplace. In my church. In the missions field. In whatever I'm doing. Be that one person who makes a resolution of prayer. That's why even in our first worship today, Pastor Yu said he got a letter from that lady who never met before. She said, Pastor Yu, my, my marriage is too hard. Things for my husband are too hard, too hard for me. And he said, you're the, and what, how did Pastor Yu reply? You're the only one who can make that resolution of prayer for your family. You're the only one. Do it. So it's what? Either give up, either give up on your marriage, stop doing it and just call it quits, or what? Make a resolution. Everyone, what's my resolution today? And what, what, what is the person who made that resolution? What, where do we find this? In Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. <laughs> I have to think for a second. What happened in Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter 10, verse 12? What did the angel of God say to him? Then he said to me, do not be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart on understanding this and humbling yourself before your God... Your words were heard, and I have come to respond. I have come in response to your words. Everyone, this is this is the rightful answer of the one who makes a resolution of prayer. God mobilizes his armies of angels. The working of the kingdom of God, that 25th hour, becomes my eternal answer for my field, for my church, for all 237 nations. Everyone, if it's not for that, we don't need an eternal answer. If it's not for that, we don't need God's kingdom to come upon my life. What, for what? If it's not for this, what do I need God's kingdom to come upon my life for? So I get straight A's? So I can get a promotion at work? You know, I say this often. So when Pastor, you said it today in the first worship, I was like, that. I, was like me, I say that too. I was like, me too. What do you say? Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross so that we could eat good food. He didn't die on the cross so we can drive nice cars, wear nice clothes. It's not that we can't have those things. It's that he didn't die for this. He didn't bear the cross for that. He bore the cross that we might make this resolution in prayer. Enjoy our prayer, for, what, 40, 10, 30, it doesn't matter. These are just numbers. On this Lord's day so that everything becomes my prayer. So that God's kingdom comes upon my life. So that eternal answer goes to 237 nations that I might be what? That one person in my field. That one person. These are one of my favorite phrases in all of our, you know, in our upper room church, we have a lot of terms and a lot of numbers. This is one of my favorite. 그한 사람, that one person. Be that one person for my family, for my field, for my work, for everything that I'm in, inside of, for my college. Be that one person who makes this resolution of prayer. Then we can go into the intro introduction. What's the introduction? The remnant for the age. The remnant for the age for what? The evangelist, commander, leader for all 5,000 colleges of North America. That what? That saves this church. However, ultimately, this answer, the remnant for the age, the evangelist leader, is to what? To save this church and all churches that are closing down.
Because the church is the only partisan, the physical partisan, that blocks all the disasters for this age. That's what the church is. And it's exactly the same reason why the church is Satan's biggest, best playground as well. That's why it's so easy to, people have problems in the church and things collide, fall apart at the church. That's Satan's number one playground, but it's also the field that you and I have to save as the evangelist leader. <sighs> Yesterday, I was talking to our assistant, pa uh, assistant pastor, Grace Park, and she was like, like, why did you, what? she's like, hey, how come you're not telling me what you're doing sometimes in church? I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I was like, okay, I'm sorry. You should probably tell you more things, report to you more. She's like, uh, our, one of our remnants is telling me that you, you asked her to take care of the two teachers at her church that you shared the gospel to. And, I, and at first, she was like, you know, you should do that. And I was explaining to her um, how God is leading us in, in our church and, and in his word. And I said, the reason why I'm raising up our remnants like Kelly, Janie, Juni, our Deacon Dinesh, everyone in the field, in, the, in their field with the, the people they work with, the people they see often, is so that they can taste this, the answer of the evangelist leader. It's so that they can have a reason to do this, have a resolution of prayer. Everyone, you don't live with me but you do see me from time to time. I know our Deacon Dinesh, she lived with me, I, we lived with him briefly, but because God has given me the blessing of being in this position to be an evangelist, to be a minister, to be a, a, a pastor in the church, just knowing that that's my blessing makes me have this so much easier, my resolution of prayer. It's not because it's work, right? Because as soon as it becomes my work, it's hard to do. It gets hard. It becomes a burden. Like, oh, my gosh, now I have to do this work. I have to go to this school this to, on Wednesday and Friday and do this, set up for this and f Saturday. It just becomes work then. Not that kind of work. I'm talking about that blessing of my identity, my heavenly power, talent, and mission that comes from the throne of God. When I have that, when I restore that, when I believe it and hold on to it as my covenant, having that resolution of prayer becomes easier. Everyone, the reason why I'm asking you people to rise up in your fields and saying you should run the evangelism field in your work, in your school, is so you have a taste of this. Have a taste of prayer. Have a taste of the remnant leader evangelist who shares the gospel in his field. I said this before, right? When our uh, Remnant Janie, when she was first starting the uh, upper room meetings with the, the people at IDME, and after her first meeting, she was like, oh my gosh. And even I was like, oh, did I make a mistake, right? I was like, maybe I didn't, right? But I changed, that. my heart changed so fast when God gave me the Holy Spirit during the time where she was relaying the word. I said, Janie, this is why we exist, to worship God, to give him all the glory, and to share the gospel in our field. This is your life. Your life isn't to make money in IDME to be a high position. That's part of it, but the reason why you have to live your life is to share the gospel, to be this evangelist leader. And inside, when we make that resolution of prayer, this becomes realized. This evangelist leader it's not just an ideology. It becomes realized in my life. It becomes my greatest joy. When I went to our um, evangelism school at George Washington University on, two, on Wednesday this past week, the, uh, one of our main messenger pastors is Pastor Brendan Ha. And he, um, when he was giving his message, he said that because he's so caught up in his work, in his grad school, all the stuff, he, ca he forgot to pray. So I realized I wasn't praying anymore. I was just doing work all the time. And what was so funny was that hit me hard too because last week, I don't know, what was the flow of our messages last week? Our, the whole Sunday pulpit was what? See, our, our deacon is praying. He knows. It was all about prayer. All about prayer. And so I said, God, I'm going to make this right. Okay, God, me too. Make a new resolution and pray again. And I didn't do it Monday, Tuesday. And then Pastor Brendan Huss said that, and I said, I realized, oh my goodness, even our pastors. What an important, it was such a blessing to me because I realized no matter who's giving the message, if God's word is being proclaimed, that is a gospel being proclaimed. Everyone, you know me, right? 
we'll talk about Brazil beating Korea, and we'll talk about this and that, right? But ultimately, when I'm standing up here, it's not me standing up here. It's God raising me up, and it's not you sitting here because you want to. It's God who's letting you sit here by his grace. Then only God's word becomes proclaimed. Then everyone who delivers God's word, that is God's messenger. Whether the sermon is good, whether it's super nice, organized, handwriting is perfect or not, or not, or everything in between, it doesn't matter. God's word is being proclaimed. And that message hit me so hard. From that day, I realized why God gave me the word on Sunday and why God led me to evangelism school on Wednesday. And I restored my prayer for the next three days. I wrote that too on my life. I was like, three days. I was like, okay, I can do it. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Everyone, when we restore our identity as this, the remnant for the age, inside of my resolution of prayer, then we have every reason to be that one person to be that evangelist leader. You have to taste the, the fruit of evangelism in your field. And that's why I said to Assistant Pastor Grace Park, the reason, and then when I said that to her, and I wasn't like, rah, 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 I was just like, just exp- calmly explaining. She's like, You're, oh, she's like, you know what? You should tell me that then. Now it makes sense. But, which isn't, you know, I should be reporting. I'm, I'm not the senior pastor of anything. I'm not even, I'm like barely an assistant pastor, even as it is. I shouldn't be doing things on my own, for sure. That's absolutely for sure. Um, but in, in the midst of that guidance, in this time of prayer that I have, my resolution of prayer, I realize how we need to raise up our church officers, our remnants. We have to reach, se- just like our deacon Dinesh prayed in his uh, representative prayer, 70 regions, 70 regional churches through us, through you, has to happen, everybody. That's why we're here receiving God's word together. And I'll try to get through this quickly. <clears throat> this is our introduction, and this is the main body of our message right here. Number one, the spiritual summit. And then obviously the number two is going to be what? The skill summit. And then number three, rightfully, it's cultural summit. So what as a spiritual summit? What is God giving to us as a spiritual, for to me as a spiritual summit? Spiritual platform. It's so that you and I would be the spiritual platforms in our field, holding on to what covenant? Always, always this covenant. 138. I'm still waiting for my the, the 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 lease papers in my mail so I can finally change my license plate to one three only one three eight. No one better take that idea. I'm still waiting. I'm t- this is it. This is us. We're holding on to this and everything we do to, so that you and I as a spiritual summit can be the spiritual platform. Because what's the platform? It's where people come. People come to the platform. If there's an airport, people will go there. If there's a train station, people will go there. If there's a media platform, YouTube, people will go there. You and I, as a spiritual summit, have to be the spiritual platform with what? With this answer. Only Christ, only God's kingdom, only the Holy Spirit. There's nothing else we need to hold on to as a platform. No one needs to come to me for anything other than this. That's the what? That's a spiritual watchtower. Third, that's a spiritual antenna. Is this all showing up on the, should I move this? That's a spiritual antenna. Ultimately, what is all this? What is all this saying? The spiritual summit what? Denies himself, herself. Because why? They already have the true answer. The spiritual summit, who is only Christ, only God's kingdom, only the Holy Spirit, that platform, that watchtower, the antenna, who shares his message, they deny themselves because they have the true answer already. And this is why This message is so in line and in the flow of our pulpit message. 
Just like in today when we receive this word, John 19.30, this isn't Jesus crying out, oh my gosh, it's finished. Like, I'm done. Oh, Adidas. Right? It's not that, right? It was a victory cry. It is finished. Because what? The promise is fulfilled. The promise of you being lost in your original sin under Satan's control, destined on a short leash to go to hell, that's been finished. So then as a spiritual summit, what's my first priority? What is my first priority? Even right now, that's an important question to ask myself. If this is my, if this is a destiny, if this is the direction God is sending me to save this church as a leader in the resolution of my prayer, then what's my, what should my priority be as a spiritual summit? And, and that priority isn't just simply my physical actions. It's in everything in my life. What's my physical priority in my heart? What's a physical priority? What's a priority in, in my finances? What's a priority in, in all of my planning in, throughout my life? I'm not saying we shouldn't have a plan because you should have plans for some things. But ultimately, what? We're following God's plan as a spiritual summit. What's my priority? Don't remain in your suffering. Don't remain in, your, don't remain in that life of curses and disasters. You're free from that. It's unnecessary for me to live my life how I used to live as a non-believer. Why would you do that? You don't need to anymore. It's been completely free for, it's completely finished for you. And as a spiritual summit, we're holding on to the covenant while we wait in enjoyment. Because why? This right here? I don't know where to write this. Even Satan knows. Even Satan knows if you're here or not. I mean, you can come to church and you can fool everybody. And you can fool me too. I don't. But you, you can't fool yourself and you can't fool Satan. You can't fool God. Even Satan knows if you're here or not. You know, um, I'm not like trying to brag or anything. I'm not trying to like put myself up or anything like that. But be because I know a little bit of a taste of what it means to pray and, and to put everything within God's hands in my prayer. It's sometimes I can tell when people aren't praying. Especially when people come up before the church, like from the pulpit, when they're doing their praise leading and stuff. Excuse me. You can tell when, like, a praise leader for a church, if they, if they pray or not. It's not simply that the message has to be organized in me because I memorized it, but when we're in the, con in the resolution of prayer, and this is taking place in my life, 24, as that one person that prayer comes out naturally in all things, and we hold on to God's word so easily. It, Satan knows too. He knows if I'm in the midst of this spiritual summit answer of the platform, watchtower, antenna, if this is taking place in my life, that complete answer of it all being finished. Even Satan knows. Everyone, there's no reason for us to lose to Satan. There's no reason for us to remain how we used to live under his control and power. There's no reason for this anymore. What has Christ not already done for you? What, and what more does he need to do other than give you eternal life? There's nothing else. You've already received all that. Everyone, be the remnant for the age, the evangelist leader who saves this church, who saves your family. It's the same thing here. It's the... It's the skill platform, the skill watchtower, the skill antenna. Meaning what? What does it mean that I'm the skill platform, watchtower, antenna? It's the one who remains, the remaining one who has this answer of what? Only uniqueness and recreation. 
that you enjoy this only uniqueness recreation as the only one in that field of your skills. That's a skill summit. In the place where God has given, that God has given to you. The one who what? Who knows true prayer. Who enjoys true prayer? Who's a perfect example of this? David. He was the skill. He was the spiritual summit, and the skill summit. Like at the same time, when he was a young boy at seventeen, and he was shepherding. He enjoyed that spiritual summit, that time where he denied himself because he had the true answer, and he was the only one. Because he enjoyed this answer, he was the only one as a skill summit who enjoyed true prayer, who could stand before Goliath and make that confession of faith. The only one where everyone else was scared, shaking in their, in their boots. They had to be put in place by what? A young boy who was a spiritual skill summit, who had that resolution of prayer. Because in his time of shepherding, what did he do? He was a spiritual summit who held on to God's word and meditated on the law. And then as a skill summit, that only uniqueness recreation answer of saving his flock. Lions and tigers and lions and bears. I don't know about tigers. Lions and bears. So that when Goliath came, he made that confession in front of the whole world, the remnant for the age, to save his church, his nation. That's the skill summit. That's the skill platform, watchtower, and the antenna. What about the cultural one? Same thing here, right? It's this cultural platform, watchtower, antenna. The one who goes like this. What nobody can do plus where there's nothing. Everyone, this is our start. This is how, this is our start. That's how we need to start. In that field of nobody. Where it's only you. With plus Nothing. All the way to what? Everybody and everything. Saving everybody and everything. Because what is ultimately the cultural summit? The one who saves 237 nations. That's the cultural summit. Because this ultimately, as nobody, nothing, that saves everybody and everything, it's ultimately what? Restoring all things. Restoring that culture. Because right now, what is our culture? Our culture is one that's completely covered in darkness, one that's completely covered by Satan. That's our culture right now. And that everything is so normal now. Oh. Everything is so normal now. Like, people don't have shame anymore. Like, everything is, okay. well, not everything, but a lot of things are becoming okay, right? It's only getting worse. It's not like it's going to get better. It's only getting worse. And that's why I was mentioning to you all before, right, my cousin, my cousin Stephanie, who, who loves God, who wants to be an evangelist and missionary, she's too scared to even have children, she said, because she's so scared of the culture we live in. If you really look at it like that way in the gospel, then it's like, then you should have children. Because then they're only the only ones who can come and raise up, rise up and save the age. That's the, everyone, that's the gospel covenant that we can enjoy. That's why I'm never worried about Junior. I know he sees like kind of, you guys are all like, he's addicted. And he kind of is, yeah, he, <laughs> he needs help. But <laughs> he's a little bit addicted, right? I'm not worried about him at all. He's a child born in the covenant, in the covenant line, in this church. He will be the remnant to save the age. Same thing. I, I'm pretty sure our deacon Daniel Park is giving worship with us too. I pray for his hedge and hedge every day. And the fact that they're even as good as they are, it's only because they have that background of prayer, right? That's what the message we received today in our, in our first worship, right? The background, the people who have the background of prayer, their life, their, their entire life from beginning to end is completely different. It is. It absolutely is. We don't, you know, I can give you evidence from the Bible of Samuel, Hannah, Jesse, David, Moses, Jacob, right? But you can just look at me and know that. 
You can look at our sisters here and know that. We come from a background of prayer. Our whole life is completely different. That's why even our, 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 our uh, remnants, Hejuni, Hejuni, they're such good boys because they had a father who had a background of prayer for them their whole lives, their entire lives. I mean, that is so, that's a reason for you to have children. So start making kids, everybody. I know, especially our married couple, start making kids, okay? Because your kids aren't just kids. They're not just another person in the world. They are evangelists. You're raising evangelists of this age. Everyone, we don't need to, if, if this is the answer you and I enjoy, we don't have to be scared to have kids. That's the reality of our churches today. They have no answer. They don't, this doesn't make sense to them. They don't have a resolution of prayer. And I'm not criticizing the churches of this world. I'm not. I'm saying, what is it for you? What is your mission then in the midst of all this, in this co- living in this country? What is your mission? To be just like them? Or to save them? To save the church. Everyone, this church, it means all churches. The remnant for the age, the evangelist leader who saves this church and all, all the colleges then your children will be the main figures of evangelism in their college fields, in their schools, and even in the grow up in their workplaces. Because ultimately, what is this? Everyone, what is this message for? Twenty thirty to twenty eighty. When you and I, by this time, twenty eighty, we should be dead, right? I'm pretty sure I'll be ninety years old. Our deacon Dinesh will be ninety eight, seven. Maybe some of you younger people will be alive, but I don't know if I'll be alive to 90, right? But we're preparing for this, 2030 to 2080. Then our children have all the, they have everything already because of this answer that you and I enjoy first. Or are we enjoying it? But this is our conclusion right here. I don't have space. I'm going to make the conclusion right here because I don't have space. Put it right here. The, seven, the answer of the seven journeys. And everyone, you know, we, we already know what the seven journeys, whether you know it right, right off the top of your head or not, you do know it. We know it's the 10 mysteries, 393 blessing, the 10 plaf. We all know what the seven journeys are. 62 life points of the evangelists, the flow, five strategies, uh, 20 strategies, five answers. Everyone, but what does it mean to me? See, all of this message right here and the restoration of prayer, this, this introduction, this is also our conclusion. The remnant for the age, RT for the age. To save what? To save all the churches in our colleges. In the midst of this resolution of prayer, which is what? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Everyone, we all know what Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 is, right? Don't be anxious. In all things, what? But in everything by prayer, as your thanksgiving. Everyone, what is a true prayer? What is my true prayer today? It's equivalent to my, my thanksgiving. Because true pra- well, what's prayer to the people? What's prayer to the world and religion? What's prayer? Give me this. I want this. God, do this for me. What's true prayer? It's me giving thanks that, that this is my answer, that this is my life, that this is all of my blessing that I can enjoy today in my field and in my church. Everyone, what's the standard of our prayer, of our resolution of prayer? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. In everything. Not just when it's bad. Not just when it's hard. In everything. So we don't have to be, um, you know that, that confession today of the, the captain, the sea captain who had liver cancer, and then he, um, he only had six months to live. But then he's, he's like, okay, I only have six months, I'm going to share the gospel. Everyone, that is truly a work of God, but we don't have to get that far, right? Do I have to get cancer just to realize that this is my blessing? already today 
remember the spiritual everyone the spiritual summit the spiritual platform watchtower antenna this was prepared for us before time even began that's when you think about the garden of eden and why god even placed that fruit in in the middle of the garden it all makes sense because it was prepared from before time even began because christ is christ from before time even began he was with god before even forever began and we realize this is I, don't, I can live like this today. I don't have to get cancer just to realize I need to share the gospel, right? Or do you? I don't know. Maybe you do. <laughs> Jesus like, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I guess you do then. <laughs> I don't know. But do we really have to is the whole point, right? Do I have to get sick just to realize? And everyone, even right now, if, if anyone is sick, I bless, you all, I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ that you begin your resolution of prayer where all even your illnesses become healed. And don't think, oh, I'm, I'm okay, I'm healthy now. No, you, we don't know. There's, there's something in you. You don't, diseased people don't get diseased one day. It builds up over a long period of time, and they're like, oh, man, it's too late now. That's why it's important for us to really enjoy the triune God working upon us to restore our five powers. Among the five powers is what? My physical power. Because that's important. Even my physical condition affects my spiritual state. If I'm always sick and I'm always tired, that affects my worship. It affects my walk, of, my walk of faith. It affects my prayer. Let's not get to that point where we have to be, you know, terminal stages of cancer. Just to enjoy this blessing that was already prepared for us before time even began. Everyone, does it, I hope that makes sense to you all. Before time even began, Christ had this all prepared for us. What are we worried about? What's really my first priority then? I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ that today you would begin your resolution of prayer. That's even before the introduction. It's my resolution of prayer. As we start a new uh, concentrated prayer f- from starting from December 25th, which is our Sunday, for the next 10 days after that, from that day and then the next nine days, we're going to begin our early morning prayer from that Monday. Oh, wait, I, hold on. Our two our remnants aren't going to be here. You, you guys need to join us online, and you'll be lucky because it will be like in the middle of the day for you. But um, we're going to, we have to restore this concentrated prayer. Make a resolution even today, everybody. It is finished for you. That's not a cry of despair. That's a victory cry of the fulfilled promise of Jesus Christ before time even began. You will be the spiritual summit. You will be the skill summit. You will be the cultural summit, the remnant leader that saves this age, that raises that partisan of prayer. May you raise it up today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for preparing this blessing for us before time, before forever even began. May this be a new start for us to enjoy the restoration and that resolution in prayer that becomes my standard of prayer. May God receive all the glory, and in Jesus Christ's name we pray.